everyone it's been a while since I uploaded a video but today I decided to uh, do a video with regards to immigrating here in Newfoundland and Labrador but before I begin just want to let you know that I am NOT an immigration expert everything that I will um, say in this video is based on my own experience and also based on the information that you can find on the Newfoundland and Labrador website which is right here and also on the federal website which is the canada.ca so, so just to give you an idea i came here to newfoundland in 2013 with a work permit uh, and then after two years of uh, working with the same employer i got nominated under the newfoundland and labrador provincial nominee program i uh, eventually became a permanent resident and then now a citizen of Canada. There is actually an initiative that was released in 2017 and it's called the Way Forward on Immigration in Newfoundland and Labrador. So it is actually a five year action plan for increasing immigration in the province. So Newfoundland and Labrador is actually facing a significant demographic challenges. So if some of you are not aware, the province is actually one of the most rapidly aging province and also has the lowest birth rate since saying that the the province is actually um, projecting that by year 2025 there will be a 10 percent decline in the uh, working age population to actually help address those trends immigration is one of the important tool that the province think that can help so they put up a very very strong plan for immigration to help the province to uh, secure a sustainable future just to give you an idea there are 10 top countries of origin for immigrants to newfoundland and labrador as of 2015. number one is the philippines to syria china india Eritrea, Sudan, United Kingdom, Iraq, United States of America, and Nigeria. So as part of the WAY program on immigration in Newfoundland and Labrador, the province is committed to do its part to actually increase the immigration in the province. So in 2015, the province actually welcomed 1,122 immigrants and in 2022, which is next year, the province will welcome 1,700 immigrants annually. Before we begin, just want to let you know that talking about the Office of Immigration and Multiculturalism in Newfoundland and Labrador. So this is a provincial level program. So there are the federal level uh, for immigration, which you can actually, there's a lot of programs that you can apply for. But for today, we are talking about the provincial level program that you may be eligible for. So this is the provincial nominee program and there is the Atlantic Immigration Pilot Program. The provincial uh, nominee program is basically designed to assist skilled immigrants and their families to come and live here in, in Newfoundland. So it's very straightforward. Whereas the Atlantic Immigration, uh, immigration Program is more on an employer driven program to address skills gaps and labor market needs in, in four of the Atlantic provinces that is Nova Scotia, BEI, New Brunswick, and Newfoundland. Both programs are good. We can discuss both in greater detail but I just want to give you a, a general overview of what it is about. As you notice, both of them actually will require a job offer. So one is a job offer and the other one is a guaranteed job offer. But basically, both of them, you would have a job offer. So there are ways wherein find or secure a job here in Newfoundland and Labrador. Number one, of course, is by um, looking or connecting with, with an agency or or an immigration agency here in, in Newfoundland. So basically what they do is they will match you with an employer and, and they, you'll go through interview and, and basically you have a middleman that will help you with the process. So that means finding a job, processing papers, and all that kind of stuff. The other way is to do it yourself. 
And there are resources that are available to you that you can uh, use definitely or utilize. Some of them require a social insurance number, which you can only obtain if you are here in Canada under a work permit or, or other um, status. But when you apply for a job, just make sure that you always, always include a cover letter. Okay, cover letter, make sure that you outline all your experiences and qualification with the job application. And that way, it really help increase your possibility being hired by an employer here, or be considered at least. So one of the resources that you can use and that we will talk about today is the Federal Job Bank. Now, everyone can see all the job posting on this um, website. The only thing is, before you can register, you will need, like I mentioned, a social insurance number. As a foreigner, you can only get a social insurance number if you have a valid work permit, like I mentioned, study or work permit to visit Canada. So in those cases, you would be given a temporary social insurance number. But don't worry about that because you can still, you know, the main point here is that you can still search for a job. And, and most of the time, you mention there if they are looking for an applicant just inside of Canada, uh, but there are some employers that will not require that at all and that will provide their email address so you can submit your resume. So those are the employers that you're looking for. Give you an example here, it's a screenshot. So in here you can type in jobbank.gc.ca and that will bring you to this landing page. You can then click that little search button And in here, you can type in the job that you were looking for, but in this case, I just type in Newfoundland. Okay, so let's see this posting from June 23rd, 2021. Chicken catcher. So as you can see, it'll uh, tell you what the location, what the hourly rate is. Is it a part-time or a permanent full-time? That's what you're looking for, how many vacancies there is. And this is the important part. It says this employer has applied for a labor market impact assessment to hire a foreign worker to fill labor or skill shortages on a temporary basis. And as you scroll down, you'll see um, up to when it's advertised for. In this case, it's advertised till September 12, 2021. Pay attention to that intended job posting audience. But if you go back, the fact that they applied for LMIA, they might actually consider. So here are the job details. As you can see, no degree, certificate or diploma, no experience and all that kind of stuff. And just click that green tab. And there you go. That's your employer's email address and contact number. Let's check out other posting. Let's look at this mm -hmm. posting right here. As a cook, it's 13.90 per hour, two vacancies. And again, this employer has applied for a LMIA as well. That is your employment details. And we will go down to the contact details. So again, you just click that green tab, show how to apply. And that is your employer's contact details.
As you can see, it is very straightforward, very easy to navigate. You don't really have to register or create an account because you can get the contact details anyway. And this is the last one. I just want you to look at the location that's at Happy Valley Goose Bay. That's the job requirements. Again, the employer applied for LMIA. But for this one, there's actually no intended audience for the posting. Here's an important thing, Job Bank will never ask you to pay to search and apply for jobs. Keep that in mind. So all you have to do is um, take note of that email address and make sure that you uh, attach um, a cover letter, your resume, and email those uh, employer and hopefully one way get, will get back to you. And that's one way of you know applying for a job without going through I know that agency can be very helpful. The only con is that you will have to pay more for us. This way, if you have the time and you're at home, like when I was in Singapore, my target is to actually send out my resume to at least five employers. <laughs> and you may not get any response at all. And some may respond a month after. Um, just a funny story. Um, when I was actually doing that, my target was, you know, five a day, and um, it actually came to the point where no one had responded to me, and some will respond and, and say that they're not actually are hiring foreign workers, but there was one time that I was already here in Canada, and one of the employer actually responded back and, and was asking if I was interested. But I already had a work permit, so you know you don't know, but your opportunities are there, and you just don't know. You can just take your chances. So that's it for now. I hope I kind of give you a glimpse of what it's like to apply. Um, first of all, you have to secure a job, so you know finding uh, an employer is your first step. Of all, and then we will go forward and we'll try to actually break it down to its simplest form by bit. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you. Bye. If you have any other questions, uh, please write them. I do appreciate your comments and I do read them. So if you have anything, any other questions to ask or anything uh, in your mind, don't let me know and we'll try to discuss that on the next video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or don't, and don't 